Hello, my name is Rex Busterfield and I'd like to welcome you to a video about my Qualcomm Sin Dunun. A Dunun is uh, an African drum, uh, sometimes called a Dun Dun, in fact there are lots of names for it. Uh, it has a similar membrane at each end, um, ropes which connects them together and uh, sets the tension which is the same for both skins and a hollow tubular body the player uses a wooden stick to beat one of the membranes and in some instances an iron bell called a can can is mounted on the ropes and the player will use their other hand with a steel striker to play the bell to add to the rhythm the traditional way of playing traditional style is to have the drum mounted on a stand horizontally or suspended from a strap around the player's neck um, that's called traditional style uh, however they can also be played in what's called ballet style in which they are mounted vertically often on the floor which of course dampens one of the membranes ballet style will normally uh, include three drums played by one player which means they can create more complex and intricate rhythms there are three sizes referred to as the dunun bar which is the bass one the middle one is called the sangban and the smaller one is called the kenkeni the kenkeni is round about one octave pitched above the Dunon bar and the Sangban comes about halfway between, although tuning is, uh, is not that precise as you can imagine. There's a special type of Dunon which is referred to normally as a talking drum, and on the talking drum you see that the body has what's called a, an hourglass shape and this is placed under the arm of the player who squeezes the ropes together to increase the tension on the skins and this means that the pitch can be changed by the player to imitate the intonation changes of human speech allegedly as I always do I've provided a folder with background information in and if you have a look through that you'll see some links and documents um, which you can follow if uh, if you've any more interest in the uh, the Dunon range of drums so now I'll run through the controls and give you some audio demonstration as I go along so first I'll talk about the pitch the lowest knob sets the um, pitch of the dundalon bar, the, the bass one, and you play this on middle C on the MIDI keyboard. The highest one sets the pitch one octave up on C above middle C. The spread here sets the stereo width and the panning is based on the notes that you are actually playing. So if you play on the dun dun bar, which is the lower one, it's panned centrally. If you come up to the sangban, it's panned left. And if you go up to the kenkeni, it's panned right. So by playing rhythm on the various pitches you can create the illusion of um, several players panned across the stereo field if you make that really wide you get a wider field 
So now I'll start talking about the skin. The sustain is the musical term, really, for how long the note lasts. And you probably think of it as a synthesis or decay or release time. And real drums have quite a wide range of um, different sustain values depending on the material and the tension and so on. So this is a separate control for that. This is a macro that controls the strike sound itself when the stick first hits the skin and creates lots of um, chaotic waveforms. And finally, there's a macro that controls the overall timbre of the of the drum. So now I'll talk about the stick generator. Um, the sound that you actually hear, a small amount of it comes from the sound of the stick itself hitting the skin. And we can control the uh, simulated size of the stick and its volume. I'll turn this volume up so you can hear the stick better. To set the level, I recommend you start at zero and then just bring it up until you get the right amount. With traditional Dunan playing, there are two types of strike, the open and the closed. The open is when the stick bounces off the skin and is allowed to resonate, and the closed is when the stick strikes the drum but stays in place and squeezes the skin slightly. So when muting is set to uh, a minimum, uh, we get the same uh, decay whether we strike the key, tap the key that is, or whether we hold our finger down. But if we increase the muting, then we can tap the key for the full resonance, or we can press the key and hold it down for the mute sound. Now having watched and listened to various performances on YouTube, I have noticed that on a mute strike the stick will sometimes bounce very slightly on the skin. So we have the option to set that bounce time with this knob here. Now unfortunately I tried to make it automatic so that when you pressed and held a key you could optionally get a bounce but unfortunately you needed around 150 milliseconds to evaluate the key pressed down time by which time it's much too late to get the bounce. So we have a key switch which is B2 MIDI note 47. So I'll just play that on and off on a soft setting so you can hear the bounce. Now, sometimes a player will want to mute a sound that's ringing out, especially if the drum has a lung sustain. So I provided another key switch for that which is A245 so I'll just demonstrate that so this is the ringing without the key being pressed and then I'll press the A key to deaden the sound just after I've struck it Of course, that can also be used uh, as part of the expression of the rhythm. And if you need a reminder, without having to look at the manual, just click on the question mark and it will tell you what the key switches are and what they do. Now, as I mentioned before, 
Um, when you switch to ballet style, you lose the effect of one uh, of the membranes because normally it's on the floor. If it's raised on a stand, then there's no real difference. But if I keep all the settings the same, just switch between the two, you'll hear what's programmed in to the timbre and other parameters. So. So now I'll talk a little bit about the talking drum. I've preferred um, preset for that. Uh, and then when you select talking drum here, the these controls become available. So let's go to talking drum. And then we see that we can set um, a continuous controller number here. So I've got number one set to mod wheel so the modulation wheel will control the pitch the lowest and highest pitch are set in the same way with these two controls here but for the pitch bend um, the talking bit you can set the range over which the pitch range over which that travels so let's go extreme or it could be less than an octave. On recordings, um, I analyse the sound and it's typically about an octave or a little more. So you'll see we have um, a slack switch here. So what does that mean? Well, normally when uh, a talking drum is first tuned, the ropes are tensioned, so you get um, a low pitch without any pressure on the ropes. Um, however, on quite a few performances I've seen, when there is no pressure on the rope, there is no actual resonance. So when slack is turned on and the pitch is low, you just get the hit sound. And when slack is turned off, you just get the the range that you set on the range control. So finally, I'll talk about the Ken Ken bell. If you don't want to use a Ken Ken bell, then turn it off because it will use some CPU even if you're not playing it. The Ken Ken bell is played from C3, note 48, up to B3, note 59. And the lowest and the highest pitches are set with these two controls. The bell is often mounted so that it's actually resting on the ropes, which provides uh, a degree of damping so you can simulate that by using the sustain control which determines how long the note lasts now regarding panning you will probably prefer it if the bell comes from the same uh, stereo point as the the drum itself um, so the keys are panned in the same way so if you want the bell to sound like it's in the middle play on c or d and uh, so on so forth so play the same note now to demonstrate that i'll just turn the spread up So that covers the main points about the Qualcomm Sim Dunun. And as always, have a look through the user guide if you want uh, more information. And um, I hope you have a bit of fun with it. So now I'm going to play you out with a little bit of uh, craziness using my Nightmare Out of Africa preset. Uh, which makes use of the fact that it's 
a synthesizer and not a sampler. So, until the next time, bye! Thank you.